The Common Ground World competition happening on August 20th, 2024 will feature the Starlight Market Box meta. The new craft requirements for Starlight Market Box are 1 Salmon Panini, 1 Mocha Coffee, and 1 Wooden Box. It is crafted in the boxing facility with the fastest craft time of 60 seconds and stored in the warehouse. For this competition, the Starlight Market Box will give 30,000 stars for each one sold. The trade time for this competition is 100 seconds with a 1 gasoline cost per trade. The starting layout provided for this competition is a desert biome facing west with an ocean on the north side and a river on the south side. You start with 6 tree farms, a lumberjack, a farmer house, 2 cornfields, a silo, and 2 windmills which you can use to craft cornstarch and a storehouse to store it in. You have 2 wind turbines, an industrial worker, and a warehouse to store energy in. You have an oil seep with 2 water pumps nearby, 4 paved roads, and an additional fuel storage. Everything you need to make a passive gasoline setup. You could sell corn to get all the cash you need, but in my opinion, gold will be easier to scale up and get cash quicker. I still recommend you sell some cornstarch to get some extra cash before you set up a gold rush. The cash boosts for this competition are cornstarch from 2,300 to 6,000 and marshmallow from 9,000 to 25,000. The rewards for this competition are the standard gala rewards plus an NFT known as the Hasty Ice Cream Shop blueprints for reaching the top 1200 placements in the leaderboard by the time the competition ends. The hasty ice cream shop blueprint will increase the movement speed of your ice cream scoopers which are the ice cream shop workers. The higher the rarity the higher the boost. Rewards are usually distributed directly to your account within five days. This is the competitive starlight market box build that I created for this competition. It does not utilize any NFTs. I'm going to show you how it's performing then explain the entire crafting process. Process. This one is doing about 13 Starlight Market Boxes per hour. It's been running for at least 5 hours now. I'm going to just show you the production rate for Salmon Panini and Mocha Coffee. You can see it right there. Both are about 13 per hour as well as Wooden Boxes. That is at 25 per hour so it's definitely overproducing Wooden Boxes. There is a lot of items involved in this crafting process so I'm not going to go over every single item but I will go over some of them while I'm explaining the crafting process that could be improved upon to reach a higher Starlight Market Box production rate. I'll begin by explaining all the windmill crafts which are flour, sugar, salt, and cornstarch. I have six logger houses which are in charge of picking up wood from the 14 tree farms. I have six tractors which are in charge of picking up all the crops. I have two wheat fields, five sugarcane fields, five salt fields next to the ocean so that they have the three passive salty that they need to craft brine on a green craft timer and I have one cornfield that is being impacted by one shade in order to half its production rate. I have three silos to store all of the crops in. Most of the brine should be going right here on this silo and the other crops will use both of these silos. I have a total of 20 windmills. Three of them are making salt on the green craft timer which are the ones that are touching the ocean. Three of them are making flour. Two of them are on a green craft timer which are closer to where the milk production is and then I have one on a red timer since I needed to make a little bit more flour. 12 of them are making sugar which is this one right here as well as most of these windmills and the last two which are these two are making corn starch and all of these of course are on a red craft timer since they're all right next to each other and they're casting shade on each other. And I have three storehouses. For milk and egg production I have two ATVs in charge of picking up the milk from the milk barns or the eggs from the chicken coops. I have six milk barns and one chicken coop. The chicken coop has two dirty. This is done on purpose to reduce the egg production rates. And I have a total of 23 meadows. Also, the chicken coop is far away from the meadows. So yes, it will take some time for the chickens to go all the way to the meadows to feed upon them. But that's fine because that also helps reduce the egg production rates. I really don't need to be making a whole lot of eggs. Just the ones that I'm going to use 
for the baguette crafting process. Now I'm going to explain cheese and baguette production. I have a one rice field. I have a mixing tent that makes white rice. It does have the one passive energy that it needs from a nearby power plant. I have one sauce facility making rice vinegar. And I have one mixing tent making cheese. I have three bakeries. One is making butter. One is making dough. And the one in the middle here is making baguettes. For salmon production, I'm going to explain all the stuff that you would typically see in a fishing meta. So I have one seaweed farmer in charge of picking up seaweed from the seaweed farm. The seaweed farm is positively impacted by salty. So preferably you would want it next to the ocean so you craft seaweed really quickly. But in this case, I'm still going to overproduce seaweed even though the seaweed farm only has two salty so it's on a yellow craft timer. That is why I have it on this spot that is done on purpose. And I have one aquaculturist which is in charge of picking up seaweed from the silo and taking it to the shrimp farm in order to craft shrimp. Shrimp then gets stored in the seafood warehouse which is all the way over here on the east side. And then I have a mixing tent making fish chum and one fisherman house over here closer to the two fishing platforms. Both of these fishing platforms have the six passive energy that they need but they are on a red craft timer because they are negatively impacted by dirty from the power plant and a lot of other buildings near here like the shallow mine and the refineries but that's okay because having two of these allows me to make all the salmon that I need and I don't have to worry about manually crafting energy for this process and all those items and crafting processes that I just explained well that's for the salmon panini so we're finally here one of the main items for the starlight market box for this competition the salmon panini is crafted in the cafe and the only other items I need to explain are the lettuce head and tomatoes so I have one tomato farm it is in this spot with two dirty that is on purpose that is to slow down the tomato rate so that, that it gives me the correct amount of tomatoes that i need and for the lettuce heads i have six lettuce fields that gives me all the lettuce heads that i need for the salmon panini production rate salmon panini is stored in a pantry so you want to make sure that is nearby if you don't have a pantry you're not going to be storing salmon panini now i'm going to explain wooden box and ceramic mugs wooden box is another core item for the starlight market box so i have two lumber mills this one is making lumber and the other one is making wooden box you could switch them around it still works but if you have this one making lumber it's actually going to produce more lumber either way it's going to overproduce lumber but having it this way where the lumber mill over here is making lumber will produce less lumber than necessary that means you have spare wood for all of your windmills because you do want to make sure that all your windmills are getting the wood that they need so you can craft all that other good stuff i have two warehouses one lumber yard to store the lumber and the wood in one shallow mine making chromium this does have the passive water drums from the two nearby water pumps and the passive energy from the nearby power plants and six pottery shops these are all under red craft timer which generally is not recommended because this only lets you make around 2.5 or ceramic mugs for each one of these. It's a very slow process. And the reason it's on a red craft timer is because it is being negatively impacted by dirty from the nearby power plants, but that's what gives them the passive energy. So everything in this build has passive energy and passive water drums, but the items that are negatively impacted by dirty, well, the buildings I should say, which are the fishing platform and the pottery shop, that is done on purpose just because I don't need a very high amount of the those items. Yes, this build would be more efficient if you were to use nuclear power, but it would also take longer since you do have to collect a lot more cash to build the nuclear power as well as the process of collecting steel. And now I can explain mocha coffee production. I have five cocoa trees. All that cocoa should go to this silo to be picked up by the two chocolate shops in order to craft chocolate bars. I have two candy shops to craft marshmallows with. I have eight coffee plants. This gives me all the coffee beans that I need 
for the mocha coffee. I have two cafes. One crafts the hot cocoa over here on the north side. And this one crafts the mocha coffee. It is closer to this silo. This is the silo that should house almost all the coffee bean. And I'm just using one boxing facility to craft all of the Starlight Market box. For the gasoline setup, I'm using two power plants like so. Two water pumps like so. The refinery in between them crafting gasoline. A refinery to the side crafting petroleum. I do have an oil seep for the passive crude oil for the petroleum and therefore allowing me to craft gasoline without requiring oil pumps. I can also use the passive crude oil to easily craft energy with any of the four power plants that I'm using for this design. And I have one fuel storage to store the petroleum and gasoline in. For the trade setup, I am using two trade depots. Both of these are on the northwest corner. And the only optional building here is this well. You probably are going to build a couple of these to get all the water that you need to build all the ponds, the shrimp farm, the fishing platform since these need 25 water, and the rice field since it needs an extra two water to actually get built. But otherwise you could delete the well at the end. Now the only thing I missed is the clay field. Yes, this gives us the clay lumps to craft the ceramic mugs. You do not need a forklift for this process. The pottery shop workers can just pick up the clay lumps themselves from the clay field. It is slightly slower than having a forklift, but I'm not using a forklift in this build. I don't recommend it because that's going to cause a clay lump to be overproduced and stored in your warehouse. That means you have more items to sell. Better to just avoid that completely. Here is what the auto sell looks like. I have all of the items at an auto sell quantity of 10. I also have wood in here because it is overproducing wood. It's also overproducing lumber, but just in case you have too much wood in your lumber yard I do recommend that you sell wood I also have petroleum on here you shouldn't be overproducing petroleum but better safe than sorry and you could also rotate your refinery making petroleum around so that it doesn't overproduce if you want to be extra careful here's what the build looks like on the visualizer total cost is close to 14 million wages are actually closer to 19,000 per minute I'm not sure why it's showing 16,000 per minute on on here. The build cost does not include the cost of the ice block production since you will need to create ice blocks in order to build the seafood warehouse. This visualizer file has two stages, one showing you what the starting biome looks like, and of course this is the finished build. You can find the file for this visualizer on my Discord server and then an invite link is in the description. This is a complicated design, but not the hardest one that I've done. There are a lot of items that you have to balance in order to get this to work efficiently. I wouldn't say this is perfectly balanced, but it is close. I'm going to provide some tips to you on how to further improve this. Uh, like you saw, this is making 13 Starlight Market boxes per hour. I believe you could push it to around 15 per hour, at the very least 14 per hour. So I'm I'm just going to provide some tips to you. It is overproducing a couple of items, but one of them is cheese. The thing about overproducing cheese is that it's going to eat up more milk, and that means you will need more milk in order to accommodate all the other stuff like the butter, chocolate bars, and the hot cocoa. So ideally, you only want to craft the exact amount of cheese that you're planning to use for your production rate. One way to accomplish this, and probably the best way, is to limit the amount of husk rice that you produce, therefore limiting the amount of white rice and rice vinegar that you use since you require rice vinegar in order to make cheese. Now there are two ways to limit your husk rice production. One way is to have the rice fields impacted by either shade or dirty in order to slow them down, but it's very hard to get the exact number right. You may even need two rice fields to accomplish this placed in very strange places so it is difficult to do this but it is possible the other way to control the rate is by having the rice field farther away from the silo so instead of having this rice field there you could put it somewhere else that has eight water such as all the way in this spot and then just have the lettuce field somewhere over here since that one only needs seven and this 
will reduce the production rates of the husk rice, therefore ultimately reducing the production rate of your cheese, which helps you save on milk. And the other tip I have is going to be for the ceramic mug production. This build is doing about 14 ceramic mugs per hour, which means you could only go up to 14 starlight market boxes per hour because of that. So if you are using nuclear power, then you can have maybe one or two pottery shops on a green crowd timer and you're going to make plenty of ceramic mugs but if you still want to continue using this power plant and basically dirty power as i'm going to call it you could add one more pottery shop in this location to make two more ceramic mugs per hour and then move this fisherman house either somewhere here this may slow down other things but you don't actually need this road and it won't impact that windmill or you could get rid of this road same thing or better yet utilize subgrid placement to get rid of some of these roads and then you can have the fisherman house somewhere right here if you do know how to utilize subgrid roads that is removing these roads and basically having one road between these two loggers another road between these two loggers and another road between this fuel storage and the logger this actually opens up two spots so you could have two more buildings there it might slow down some stuff probably not though like it might slow down lumber rate a little bit but you won't notice the difference there but that subgrid placement opens up two more buildings so you could do that change and therefore increase your ceramic mug production and potentially increase your starlight market box production well i hope i was able to help you out if you found this informative or helpful please leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing if you haven't done so if you would like to support the channel please check out the links in the description of the video as always I appreciate your support and thank you for watching.